Dave, it's your Idaho Central app here. Any chance you're missing a debit card? Let's get that taken care of for you. With ICCU's card control, you can turn any card off with the tap of your finger. You got it. And back on again. Ow, 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 ow. The closest Idaho Central Credit Union branch is in your pocket. Ooh, the gym. Old stomping grounds. <laughs> Hank Patterson, fly fishing guide. Riley Smith, tight end. Yeah, I appreciate that. Hey, you wouldn't happen to be the kicker. No, tight end. Again, thank you. I'm looking for a kicker for Lithia Ford's fall kickoff sale. But you're not the kicker. No. Yeah. Now yeah, the kicker's probably taller. In a lot better shape. So, okay. What uh, position do you play? Tight end. Squats. Yeah. Try it sometime. RowPaint.com, the official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics, is going all in this season with an all-star lineup. First up, he led the Broncos to three conference championships and 10 20-win seasons. It's Coach Leon Rice. Next, he's the founder and CEO of RowPaint.com. He played a little basketball in high school on the driveway with his mom. It's Andy Rowe. Oh, no. Want to just paint my house? Now that I can do. When I want Boise State to win, I trust Coach Rice to lead the Broncos to victory. And when I want the best painting and garage floor coating, I trust RowPaint.com to get that job done right. It's time for the Lithia Ford of Boise Post Game Show from Bronco Nation News. We're breaking down the game with highlights, interviews, analysis, and most importantly, you. Give your thoughts on the game in the YouTube chat or Facebook comments, and we'll include the best ones on the show. Check out LithiaFordBoise.com to view their full inventory of vehicles, or check them out at 8853 West Fairview in Boise. Today's broadcast is coming from the Cutwater Spirits Can Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of pre-mixed premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Now let's head out and join BJ Rains for the Lithia Ford of Boise Post Game Show from Bronco Nation News. <laughs> Well, there you go, folks. Welcome into Extra Mile Arena for the Lithia Ford of Boise, a post-game show. That was kind of a, a fitting moment for this game. A huge block from Omar Stanley and then uh, a missed shot, but uh, two offensive rebounds and a bucket from Omar Stanley there. Boise State uh, goes on to win 89-79, to and uh, we welcome you here uh, to Extra Mile Arena. We're going to break this thing down. Lithia Ford of Boise post-game show. We'll hear from both head coaches, Leon Rice. We'll hear from uh, uh, Richard Patino. We'll hear from uh, Jamal Mashburn on the New Mexico side as well. And then uh, Tyson Degenhardt, Omar Stanley, and Shabuzo Abo all talk to the media uh, as well. So plenty of post-game reaction, plenty of post-game interviews. And we have 200 of you already logged in watching this thing. So I really appreciate you guys spending part of your Saturday evening with us. Uh, what a fun game, fun atmosphere, fun crowd. If you're a, a Boise State fan you and you came to this game, you left uh, just with a, a great feeling about this one. And um Really, it wasn't a 10-point game. It should have been a 17-point game. There was a couple weird fouls. The one that went against uh, 
uh, Roddy Anderson down there underneath the basket uh, led to a, a swing, and then uh, Max Rice, after he'd already shot a free throw, uh, they went and reviewed it and called a foul, and that led to some points as well. So it ended as a 10-point margin. It really wasn't that big, uh, or it wasn't that small. It, it should have been bigger. Boise State with just an impressive second half. Uh, it was a two-point game at halftime. Boise State comes out 54-46 in the second half uh, to win. It's a second straight game. Boise State scored 50-plus points in the second half to pull away here. 89-79 the final, and you just got to love the balance for Boise State. 24 points for Omar Stanley, 23 for Tyson Degenhart, 17 for Chibuzo Abo, and 16 for Max Rice. And we've talked a lot about this. Uh, you know, it seems like a different game. It's been one guy having a rough game, but one guy having a great game. And tonight, certainly it felt like all four of Boise State's big guns played well, and, and they were tough to beat tonight. Just uh, super impressive on the defensive end, super impressive on the glass. 17 offensive rebounds for Boise State led to 18 second-chance points tonight. Uh, Boise State also had 10 fast-break points and uh, 40 points in the paint, and uh, Boise State also got 14 points off of uh, 11 turnovers for New Mexico. So just seemed like a lot of loose balls, a lot of uh, key rebounds, and, and Boise State was right there and was getting them. And uh, I thought Boise State had uh, – let's see, they credited them with uh, – Eight steals tonight. Boise State was really getting in the passing lanes. Max Rice was slapping the ball down some. Eight steals uh, for Boise State. So uh, super, super impressive all around. And for now, it's a quad one win. We'll see what happens to New Mexico. They were uh, number 25, I believe, coming into the game. Uh, the, the margin only being 10 probably ends up helping Boise State a little bit to keep uh, to keep that uh you know, a quad one win. They have to stay in the top 30, uh, which you would think on the road, losing by 10, five spots. I would think they're probably going to stay in the in the top, uh, you know, top 30. And that's now six quad one wins for Boise State. And, um, you know, Richard Patino, you're going to hear from him in a minute, just talked about the size uh, issues against Boise State. They're just not a great matchup uh, for Boise State. Uh, you know, on their side, Boise State's a tough matchup because of the size. When you've got guys like Chibuzo Abo coming in for 12 rebounds, uh, Degenhart and Stanley both were a load inside. And I mentioned the rebounds, but, uh, you know, even shooting the ball for New Mexico as well, uh, Jalen House, 2 of 12 from the field, and that makes him 4 of 27 in two games against Boise State. So 4 of 27 for Jalen House, one of their best players, one of the best guards in the conference in the two games against Boise State. So uh, Boise State's uh, length uh, made it tough for New Mexico. Uh, they finished the game uh, shooting 43% from the field. They were only 6 of 23 from downtown. Jalen House, 0 for 8 from three-point range. Jamal Mashburn Jr. was 3 of 8 from uh, three-point range, but uh, just a super impressive game for Boise State, and kudos to the crowd, 12,184, the fourth sellout of the season, and uh, that was just a, a lot of fun, um, a lot of fun, and uh, if you came to this game, it was uh, loud and rocking, and that was probably one of the bigger crowds for the national anthem that I've seen in a long time, so um, I, I uh, was super impressed with the crowd, and we'll see if you guys can do it again on Tuesday. It, it's you know, Leon Rice uh, really pleaded in the post-game press conference, said he would write notes for folks if they need them at school or work, and it's a 9 p.m. game on a school night and a work night, but uh, it's senior night, and it's a huge game for Boise State, so there are still tickets available, and, and I know that uh, Leon is, was pleading for fans to come and go late to school or work the next day, and and uh, certainly we'll, we'll see what happens with that. Um, I really don't want to start this out with a negative. Uh, let's see. JD says, I was there fun times. All right, that'll be our first comment tonight. Bill says, Bench and Cam were quiet tonight. Uh, I was kind of by design, I think, in a game like this. Uh, Boise State, I think, just said, hey, we're going to ride our big guns tonight. I think John Mallory said that on the pregame show. I don't think there was uh, – no one really expected the bench to have a huge role tonight, and you didn't need them to. I mean, uh, Leon Rice said after the game, like, uh, I mean – New Mexico would have thanked him had he taken Omar Stanley or Tyson Degenhardt or Abo or Rice out of the game more than he had to. So, um, I mean, I don't know who you're taking out at that point. Uh, you only had nine minutes for Cam, nine minutes for Jace. Keen got a minute, and then Kobe and Andrew each got three minutes. But I don't know what else you would have done tonight. When those guys are rolling like they are, uh, I think you have to uh, – Keep them in there and keep them rolling. Wow, 280 people watching this right now. That is awesome on a Saturday night. We uh, we uh, don't get this many for football post game shows sometimes. So it just shows the uh, growth of BNN and the show the growth of this basketball program here. Is uh, uh, and, you know let me and, and you know I'm going to get to some of your comments and thoughts here. But uh, you look big picture wise. I mentioned this being a sixth quad one win for the moment. Um, actually a funny moment that I'm going to lead my press con my uh, story with, uh, Leon Rice was in the press conference room when the, uh, when Jerry Palms bracket projections for the mountain West came up on the TV during the UNLV game. And he, uh, he kind of, uh, like stopped and paused and was like, really Jerry, like, come on now, like, uh, to have Colorado state still as a six seed 
you know, I think Utah State he had as a five or six seed and to have Boise State as an eight. Uh, it just seems kind of funny at this point. So I'll be very curious here as these bracket projections start to change, as the the, the data and the metrics continue to change. Um, I, I think that uh, Boise State has to be in, you know, obviously San Diego State's in a good spot, but I mean, Boise State has to be right there potentially as the second safest pick in the Mountain West. I mean, you look at Colorado State, eight conference losses. Um, I, I think, uh, I mean, you just look at, what Boise State has done and what the metrics are now. We'll see when it's all said and done, but I don't know how Boise State is still on the 9-10 line like you're seeing on some of these uh, some of these bracket projections, and, and Leon certainly didn't agree with that when he saw Jerry Palm had them as an 8, and I don't think the eight's the biggest issue. It's the fact that I think he had Utah State and Colorado State way ahead of them. I don't know what at this point uh, has, has said that. Um, I mean, Boise State probably a lock now for the NCAA tournament. I mean, uh, th- maybe three games left, and if you lose all three, I mean, you're losing a, a, to a tough Nevada team. You'd be losing a quad one game on the road at Viejas Arena, and then you'd be losing one game in the tournament, which could be, you know, probably is going to be against a, a quad one game or a good team at this point. Uh, so, I mean, I, I think that if Boise State were to lose the final three games, which I don't think they will, I think they're probably uh, a lock, uh, you know, a lock uh, for, for this uh, uh, NCAA tournament at this point. So, a uh, huge, huge uh, shout-out to, uh, you know, Boise State and the fans tonight. It was just an awesome atmosphere. It was a fun time. And uh, Boise State, I think, uh, you know, has put itself in a really, really, really uh, good position uh, for the NCAA tournament. Again, they'll be Tuesday at 9 o'clock uh, against uh, Nevada. And then Friday night at San Diego State is the next one as well. Um, let's see. Uh, BNN got a nice shout out for the Roddy article. Okay, nice. Appreciate that. Uh, I'm going to have to go back and listen to that, but appreciate uh, Chris Lewis for the uh, shout out there. Uh, but uh, let's hear from Richard Patino, coach of New Mexico. Again, the Lobos now 21 and 8. They're 12 and 4 in the league. Uh, Jeff Grammer from the Albuquerque Journal and I had a chance to catch up with Richard Patino. Again, we'll get to Leon Rice. We'll get to Boise State players. Uh, but uh, let's hear a little bit from the opposing side. Here is the uh, head coach of New Mexico, Richard Patino, after the game. Um, well, credit to them. I mean, I thought we were really ready to go and, and played a really good first half. Second half, we had some really, really costly turnovers, allowed them to get dunks. Uh, then we got in foul trouble, and it was really hard to stop those two bigs. Um, we allowed them to go baseline. Our help was coming from the guards, coming towards the middle, and uh, we made a couple of miscues there. Um, but I, I, I thought we certainly showed great fight. Um, they're they're big. Uh, we're obviously not that big on the perimeter, and we got to continue uh, to work to develop that through recruiting and obviously with some of our younger guys. Um, but they overwhelmed us with the rebounding. Our defense in the first half was really good, but they were rebounding the ball. I mean, Buzo was just flying uh, over our back, not in an illegal way, but we were just not hitting them well enough. Um, so they're, they're a really good team, and um, we'll watch that film. We'll take tomorrow off, and we'll just get back to work. Uh, another case of Jalen, really poor shooting night. He's had two of them this year against Boise. Uh, Mash ends up with some points, gets to the free throw line, but he, he didn't have a great shooting night either. I, I know you talk about size all the time. It, is it really just, I mean, is there anything more to it than that, or is it just the size advantage? You know, I, I thought Mash played pretty well. Um, he was getting to the foul line. He was, he was knocking down some shots, but I certainly feel like when we play Boise, their size overwhelms us. And, um, you know, you could say, well, you could go with JB or True. And, you know, JB wasn't hitting shots, so we tried True a little bit. Um, but, you know, they're just, they are, they overwhelm you with their size. Um, and they just attack the glass. You mentioned about the 17 offensive rebounds. I mean, I, I, how hard is that when a team's getting 18 second chance points, I guess, to win? Really hard, really hard. And then the turnovers, you know, I thought when we were going against a set defense until the end there where Dagenhart and um, Stanley really hurt us. But for the most part, we were guarding. But, you know, I've said it over and over again, and, and Jeff's heard it a bunch. I mean, we got to get we got to get bigger. And, um, you know, that's going to obviously take a little time. Um, but if we do play a Boise again in the conference tournament or whatever, like we're going to have to find a way to hit bodies and keep them off the glass because – uh, they really, really hurt us there. They're like, they're like the third or fourth team that people talk about when it comes to the tournament and all this from the Mountain West. I mean, are they getting under or slept on a little bit or under talked about at all? Or, or where do you see them in terms of the conference hierarchy here? Uh, I, I don't know how they're getting talked about, but are, they're in first place or they are they maybe a win out of first place. Tied I'm not for sure. First, yeah. They're tied for first. So tied for first in um, the best of leagues ever been in the history of uh, the Mountain West. So 
I don't know who's talking about him. I, I've got a lot of respect for what Leon's built over the years. Um, I think they're, they're guys, they're talented. Stanley was a phenomenal addition. Uh, so they could, they could beat anybody, um, you know, so I don't know how they're talked about nationally. I know the Mountain West has got a lot of, a lot of love, but if you're the best first place team in the Mountain West, you deserve that recognition. JT has a, does have a big night against their bigs, but foul trouble again. Is there, how many of his fouls are just kind of maybe freshman mistakes and how many of them are, he was kind of left alone a couple times, I thought. On hard hard to tell, yeah. I mean, I have to watch. Um, I thought we, we adjusted how we wanted to guard them. But again, as I said earlier, like they were ripping the baseline a lot on us. Um, but th that's a, it's a tough cover for a freshman. And um, I'll watch the film and see uh, how we can help them a little bit more. There he is, Richard Patino, the uh, head coach at New Mexico. We appreciate again him uh, for joining us. For the 342 of you watching, don't forget to join us for the KTIK uh, 95.3 The Ticket Bronco Nation News Pool Party. We'll be down at Stadium Swim at Circa Resort and Casino in Las Vegas for the uh, Mountain West Basketball Tournament. We'll be doing live shows there all week, uh, but the pool party on Friday, uh, semifinal Friday, win or lose for Boise State on Thursday. We'll be out there on Friday from 10 to 5. Come on out, hang out. If you want to get in for free and skip the cover charge, send me an email, reigns at bronconationnews.com. Uh, if you're heading down to Vegas for the conference tournament, we're going to have some raffles and giveaways and free swag, and it's going to be a lot of fun. There'll be some food and drinks for uh, paying subscribers. Uh, we'll have a little private area in the cabana, and you can uh, get a wristband and come hang out. So it's going to be probably one of the coolest things that BNN has done, and uh, we're looking forward to you guys, and hopefully you will join us. Again, that is next Friday. That is two weeks from yesterday. Yesterday, uh, and email me reigns at bronconationnews.com and we will hook you up with a uh, free entry into that. Speaking of which, uh, I want to thank two of our sponsors real quick before we move on to the next interview. Transcomservice.com, transportation compliance service. If you're looking for a new job, the trucking industry, it's booming right now. And, uh, oh, well, they're bringing the free food over here. I know uh, I know, I know. this media group over here is going for the free food they're about to bring over, uh, pretzels and all kinds of extra food for the for the uh, media here doing some doing some work. But uh, transcomservice.com, check them out, the best in the trucking business. If you're looking to uh, get out there towing that first load in no time, uh, check them out, transcomservice.com, all the permits and things you need. Hey, speaking of food, Taco Bell, tacobellworks.com. Check them out, tacobellworks.com, SON Management, the Nicolason family, and uh, we appreciate their support and uh, Taco Bell's support of Bronco Nation News, uh, SON Management, and uh, the Nicolason family. Again, they're hiring, so tacobellworks.com. Check them out. You're looking for a job? They'll uh, hire you. They'll give you half your wages the next day after your shift, and they'll give you free food, so you can't beat that. Taco Bell. And again, check them out at TacoBellWorks.com. Back here live at Extra Mile Arena, the Lithia Florida Boise, a post-game show. Again, Boise State wins this one 89 to 79. We will take your uh, take your comments or questions. Somebody's saying free taco. Yes, if you're at the game tonight, that does give you a, uh, every, I think you have to use your app or something, but they gave away a free taco to every single person um, uh, after, after, after the game tonight. So I don't know how you get that or what you have to do for that, but they gave away 12,000 uh, 184 free tacos tonight uh, at uh, at uh, Extra Mile Arena. So um, let's see here. Uh, my uh, kids are watching. So they went to Taco Bell and uh, they said go Broncos. So uh, yeah, they, they were there tonight and had a good time. And now they could have gone on the way home back to get their other free tacos. So uh, the Broncos Sports app, I guess, is where you had to go to get that. Um, and uh, let's see. Uh, Mason wants that six seed in Spokane. Wouldn't that be something for Tyson Degenhardt and uh, especially for Max Rice, you know, uh, the, the, where he was born and grew up for the first couple of years of his life for Max Rice to go back to Spokane and play in the NCAA tournament. That would certainly uh, be something. Uh, ninth highest crowd in Extra Mile Arena history is what Grand Teton says. Uh, and somebody asked me to post my power rankings. Uh, and if I heard from any New Mexico fans yet, uh, I have not. Uh, but I think I might play uh, play it uh, play it strong on this one. We'll see. I know the uh, New Mexico fans, uh, you know, haven't had a whole lot to say. So maybe we'll see if we want to stick with the silence tonight or go trolling a little bit. I've got some. I've got a couple bookmarked uh, tweets that we can throw back out there later tonight. Uh, so we'll have to uh, to see what that. Uh, two games in a row. I don't remember the last time that happened uh, for the uh, media call out, James. So I, I don't know. I, don't, I didn't know that happened at the Air Force game. But if it did, that's uh, pretty cool. Uh, Ashton Genty was applauded going to his seat from the floor. That was cool to see. I'll tell you what, tonight was a who's who of, uh, you know, media, uh, you know, fans, friends, players. I and mean, we, I saw Ashton Genty, Spencer Danielson was here with his wife and, uh, uh daughter tonight. Um, I saw, uh, some other football players were here. 
uh, all the big boosters, uh, all the big uh, supporters, obviously Matt Bowsher and Travis Hawks and Stan Nicolason. And uh, you go down the line, Mark Ridley and his wife were here. And, and uh, I mean, everybody just kept walking by. I saw the Atkinsons, obviously uh, Chris Atkinson, Atkinson's mirror in class and uh, their crew and, and everybody, every time somebody walked by, there was another uh, big media uh, content, a big, uh, you know, shout out or someone that everybody knew. So uh, I was a uh, cool to see. This was a hundred dollar ticket on the open market. I mean, there were, uh, tickets going for well over a hundred dollars to come to this game tonight. So it was a tough ticket. It was a sellout. It was a loud crowd and it was a lot of fun. Uh, let's hear from uh, Jamal Mashburn jr. I really enjoy watching this uh, young man play. I enjoy talking to him as well. He talked to us at mountain West media days, uh, very gracious, very well-spoken. Uh, and he had a pretty solid game tonight. I know he was only five of 13 from the field, but he had 19 points. Um, and, uh, let's see, he drew four fouls as well. He had four assists, 19 points, four assists, six of six from the foul line. And he hit three of his eight, three point attempts, Jamal Mashburn jr. Let's talk to him. Boise state, uh, falls to uh or Boise State beats New Mexico New Mexico falls to Boise State and Jamal Mashburn uh, after his 19 point performance talking to uh Jeff Grammer of the Albuquerque Journal and myself uh they were just a more physical team um you know they were able to um you know physically um you know push us around and uh you know and if we're not locked in on the game plan against a team like Boise uh they're gonna make you pay for it and our their bigs made uh, made us pay for it um, even Buzo, who had, I don't know how many rebounds he had, but he had a lot of rebounds that, uh, that are on the guards that are on us. So um, we just got to go back to the drawing board and focus on tomorrow and just continue to get better because, yeah, we do need one of these road games. You guys sat on the Air Force loss for a week. I'm curious what practice was like, what the confidence was like coming into this game. It was great. I mean, it was great. I mean, uh, we had a great week of practice. Um, you know, it's, uh, I mean, I, there, would, there would be no signs of, you know, the outcome of this game if, if you would have watched our practice I mean, we, we prepared the right way everybody listened everybody together um that's just the way the ball bounced today they were more physical than us and we got to bring it to them next time so 17 offensive rebounds they had i mean you guys had a good amount too but how how tough was some of those possessions where they'd have two three four offensive rebounds it's killer man it's killer it's like like you know if you play such good defense and then you don't finish it with a rebound they get wide open threes, wide open layups. Um, so so it's, it, it's detrimental to our defense for sure. Cause we, I mean, we've we played pretty good defense throughout the year and for us to not be able to finish possessions and finish rebounds and give up 17 offensive rebounds is pretty pathetic. So um, but we should, again, we just gotta go back tomorrow and go to the drawing board. Uh, what'd you make of the atmosphere in here tonight? You guys probably see a lot of tough places on the road and it seems like Boise State in the conference isn't really one of the first couple teams talked about, but where, where do you think they rank uh, with the rest of the conference here? Man, I think they're right there. I mean, I think, uh, I like playing here, man. I mean, the crowd gets into it, man. They talking on the sidelines, man. I mean, that's that's what college basketball is all about. So I, they're, they're, this is a great place to play. I, I like playing here. It's another game where you guys weren't really able to turn the opposing team over. Um, when you guys haven't turned teams over and gotten your points in transition, you guys have had some struggles you know, scoring in the half court. Do you think that's something that you guys can shake? Um, I think so. I mean, I, I, I think uh, – as far as when it comes to turning people over and turning teams over, we know that we're not going to do that every single game. So if we're not going to do that, we got to be solid and finish possessions. Uh, and that's what we didn't do tonight. We, 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 were, we were able to be solid at some points, uh, but then, you know, miss block out or miscommunication on somebody, you know, tagging somebody and, and they get an offensive rebound, they get a kick out three or, or a layup. So I think those are things that we can correct. Those are all effort things. So those are things we can go back tomorrow and in practice and really work on them. So, yeah. You guys got two more regular season games before the Mountain West tournament. What's this team got to do to, to make sure, you know, selection Sunday isn't as, uh, you know, you guys aren't as anxious and nervous as right. uh, you can be? Is there anything you can do or is it just going to be, you know, selection Sunday is going to be a nervous day? Um, I mean, I think, I mean, I think for a lot of teams, this selection Sunday going to be a nervous day. But I mean, for us, man, we still play in meaningful games of basketball. And, and if we can only be grateful and be blessed for that, we have to continue to uh, take practice seriously and continue to stay together and focus on what our game plan is. Because like I said, you know, earlier, if we don't focus on the game plan, these teams, these conferences are going to really burn us. And th that showed. So. Um, we just gonna, like I said, we're gonna go back to the drawing board tomorrow. We're gonna, you know, rest tomorrow, whatever we got tomorrow, practice, whatever we got, and just focus on that and not focus on Fresno State yet. Focus on just tomorrow and getting better tomorrow. How much is, how hard is their balance? You know, they just have three, four guys that can go for a, a big number, and you got mm -hmm. so many different guys that count for on the court at any one mm -hmm. time. I mean, how hard is that to play against them? Um, I mean, 
It's hard. It's hard. They they got they got good players on that team. I mean, they uh you know Max Rice, Dagan Hart, man, those are dudes that I've played against, and and they're they're they're, they're such a great. I love. I'm a competitor, so I love competing. Um, so it's great, man. I mean, all these teams in this conference, man, they they're so spread out. So everybody, everybody's so good. And, um, man, it's it's terrific playing against them. Wish would have been a different outcome, but it's terrific playing against them. There he is, Jamal Mashburn Jr. Very classy kid. Enjoyed talking to him. Appreciate him after the game, giving BNN some time. And Jeff Grammer with the Albuquerque Journal uh, in there as well. A lot of nice uh, comments coming in. Big fan of this dude. Thoughtful and well-spoken. Uh, a lot of respect for Mash Jr. Man is a mature and pro. Tough to talk after a game. Um, <laughs> beat, yeah, beat Utah State, please and thank you. Now all of a sudden, uh, Boise State is a huge uh, New Mexico uh, fan because they play them in the last game of the regular season. Uh, they might have a chance that first place could be on the line for Boise State, depending on what happens for New Mexico at uh, Utah State. And I think there's a chance they could get them. I really do think there's a chance that they could get them. Hayden, you're about 100 off. There may be 226 watching on YouTube. I don't know what the number is. We're over 320. 322 to be exact, now watching the show live here on Bronco Nation News. So uh, super uh, appreciative for everyone that has uh, given up part of their Saturday evening uh, to watch this with us. We're going to hear from some players at Boise State in a minute. We're still taking your comments. I do want to thank Lithia Ford of Boise. Check them out, lithiafordboise.com. View their full inventory of vehicles. You can do what the Reigns family did. We went online, found two that we liked, did our research, went in, knew which two we wanted to test drive, picked this uh, blue F-150 right here, and we were on our way in a couple of hours. So highly recommend lithiafordboise.com. Great customer service service great excuse me great staff highly recommend those folks there and again they got five nil deals with boise state athletes so return the favor at lithiafordboise.com the blue and orange store.com if you're looking for some some boise state gear uh check them out the blue and orange store.com free shipping any order over forty dollars at the blue and orange store.com and again if you're uh, in the boise area just go to the boise town square mall there on the second floor uh the blue and orange store.com's got jerseys shirts hats you name it They've got it all there at uh, the blue and orange store.com and our friends at Bronco brew coffee, Bronco brew.coffee, the best in the business may need a cup here. It's going to be a late night uh, right in the story. Not as late as it's going to be on Tuesday though. May need three or four cups. Bronco brew.coffee is the uh, website. And again, uh, fresh roasted order coffee. They don't uh, ship it till you order it. They don't roast it till you order it. And then you get fresh coffee, delicious tasting, and it helps Boise state athletics with every sip. Make sure you check them out at Bronco brew. Dot coffee again Boise State improving to 21 and 8 on the season now 12 and 4 in the Mountain West and again that's a fifth straight win by at least 10 points obviously those four previous were against the bottom teams in the standings and they won all those by at least 20 but now five straight overall by at least 10 the Broncos shoot uh 43% for the game, uh, the same number actually almost exactly as uh, New Mexico. They shoot 43.8. Boise State shoots 43.5. But, again, a couple key stats. Um, Boise State, 40 points in the paint tonight. New Mexico actually had 40 points in the paint as well. A lot. This, was, this game had a lot of points scored on the interior. But Boise State, 10 fast break points, 18 second chance points, only two fast break points for New Mexico. And they like to get out and run and transition a little bit and get some dunks and some big baskets. They did not do that tonight. So two. Fast break points for New Mexico. That was it. And again, the final rebounding numbers were 43 to 35 in favor of Boise State. But Boise State, 17 offensive rebounds, and that turned into 18 second chance points. So Boise State getting uh, about a, almost a fourth or you know, 20, 18 percent or whatever it is of their points off offensive rebounds. And that was a huge factor in this game, a huge reason why Boise State was able to uh, – um, able to uh, you know get some extra points on the glass and and uh, win this game. So uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, was this one of the louder games uh, you've been since uh, you've been to uh, Boise State? Uh, certainly was. I mean, I think the pit was super loud this year. Utah State was super loud, but there was a couple loud moments uh, when there were a couple big buckets and runs and and three pointers and dunks and blocks. And this place got super loud tonight. So Extra Mile Arena certainly brought it. This was by far the best atmosphere at Extra Mile Arena this season. You had big crowds for Utah State, big crowds for San Diego State, but I thought this game tonight, 6 o'clock on a uh, Saturday, it just lined up perfectly, and I thought Boise State just, uh, it, it all worked perfect. Had a huge crowd, sellout crowd. I think someone said it was the ninth largest crowd in the history of uh, of Extra Mile Arena, and uh, again, just uh, super impressive from uh, start to finish for Boise State and for uh, 
the uh, you know the, the crowd. It was a nice uh, thing. Everybody worked together, and the crowd had plenty to cheer about tonight. And if you're a Boise State fan, against uh, again, I think you left here uh, leaving the game feeling pretty good. Max Rice has a lot of Luca in him. Uh, yeah, not not quite as tall as Luca. I'm not sure I'm not going to go quite that far, but he certainly can do some some nice things out there. Uh, the rebound count final number again was. Uh, 43 to 35, and Boise State had 17 offensive rebounds. New Mexico actually had uh, 11 offensive rebounds, but um, I, you know Boise State just was uh, so so impressive. Um, but uh, let's see here, what uh, what else we got here? I saw a couple over. Um, was this for the San Diego State? I would say it was comparable. I would say when Max Rice banked in that three, comparable to a couple of the shots here. I mean, that might have been a little louder, but it was it was darn close. I'm guessing it was darn close. Uh, based on how loud it was, it, it was uh, super, super loud. Um, let's see what else. Lots of empty seats, but was loud and fun. I wouldn't say there were lots of empty seats. There were there were a couple here and there, but I, I thought. That, I mean, I didn't think this 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 it was pretty packed tonight. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, rip on the, the fans at all. I thought a lot of them showed up, and I thought it was uh, I thought it was uh, a really good crowd and a loud crowd. And uh, Sam says thanks for always being there for the fans. I appreciate that. Appreciate that. That was nice of you to say. Um, we're trying to get a couple more comments here, and then we'll get to the Boise State interviews here shortly as well. Um, Boise has that killer instinct this year. I think they're going to win their first NCAA tournament game. Um, we'll see. They're certainly rolling right now, five uh, five in a row, and uh, all by double digits, as I said. And we'll wait and see what some of the numbers update again. Boise State was supposed to win this by three. They win by. Uh, 10 and the Ken Palm moves up to number 34. So a season high number 34 for Boise State in the Ken Palm rankings. Again, they were number uh, 61 going into that first New Mexico game. And now they're at 34 after beating them the second time. So in about six weeks, Boise State has really started to shoot up the uh, national rankings here. And uh, the Ken Palm numbers are nice. And we'll find out uh, what. Uh, We'll find out what uh, the net ranking says uh, tomorrow night. Boise State will play on Tuesday. Somebody was asking about Keenan Blackshear, if he's going to play for Nevada. It sounds like he will. May have been a little precautionary since they were playing one of the bottom teams in the league last night in Fresno State. But uh, Keenan Blackshear has missed the last two games. One of the better players in the in the Mountain West for Nevada, but they are expecting him probably to play uh, on, uh, on Tuesday. So, uh, again, we had uh, Tyson Degenhart, Omar Stanley, and uh, Chabuzo Abo, I believe, was the other player that uh, talked to the media. Uh, Jaden Finch helping us with this video. Let's hear from uh, Boise State players after the game. Tyson, it just feels like there's, there's like a rhythm with this team right now, just a mindset of how you guys are playing and kind of let the score take care of itself. Do you kind of feel that way? Yeah, I mean – you know, with a team like New Mexico, you're not going to put them away in the first half. You're not going to put them away with like one defensive stop or one basket. You know, you got to pile those on. And when you get into a rhythm, it's a basket and a stop, and you just keep getting those back and forth. And then you see the lead do what it needs to do. What can you say about how you're, the way your defense is playing right now? And why are you clicking so well on that side of the ball right now? This one season? Uh, I think I, during our bye week, we really looked at it defensively. Like we weren't where we needed to be. And we really took that to heart. And I think in the last five games, you've really seen our defensive intensity pick up and uh, hoping to continue that through the last week of the season. You know, yourself, Buzo, Max, uh, Omar, you've all taken over our games separately at points of the season. When you guys are all feeling it like you are today, just how well does that does the team click? Oh, man, it, it's a lot of fun because, you know, they can try to double Omar on the post and we'll spit it out and find, you know, anyone out there, Max, Buzo, Roddy, anyone. So uh, it's a lot of fun playing with them. What does Omar add to this roster, especially in the post? He's added a lot. I mean, both offensively and defensively. Offensively, you can throw it down to him on the block, and he can go score. He can pick and pop. He can make threes. But on the defensive end, he's really improved his communication and ball screen coverages and just as a presence to block shots at the rim. Can you guys are able to use your offense when these two guys have double-doubles? I mean, you know, what have these two guys made to your offense on this team? Oh, man. I mean, when you see how hard they crashed the boards, if you watch the film, I mean, they were going so hard and getting every loose ball. And it's just a testament to their work ethic and their effort. And it really made a difference for us tonight. In your opinion, good for any of you guys, was that the difference in the second half? Did you guys kind of control the boards better in the second half than in the first half tonight? Well, I thought in the first half, we were really eating them up. Um, but that was just me. I know O was killing it uh, first and second half. So I think definitely the second half, um, just O taking over the boards. And that was big for us. Omar, I mean, New Mexico's tough. 
obviously fit inside. You guys are able to get both of them, though. But you know, just the the battle and the comfort level you now have with Tyson, Cam, Buzo, the other bigs. I mean, it feels like I was talking to Tyson. It's like this synergy with how you guys are playing now. It's not even about the score. Like the score will take care of itself. Yeah. And that's just our youth. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, that's the main reason I came here, man. You know what I mean? Like the the, the culture here is, is is different. You know, it's different from anywhere else. Um, you know, and you you see like stories around the country about teams falling apart. You know, this team hasn't really f fallen apart, and I don't think we will just because of how this culture is. Just because of you know who who we got leading the leading the charge. You know, uh, Tyson's a great leader, and we have great leaders along with Buzo, along with you know Cam, along with the older guys. And so I don't think it is. I don't think it's ever going to fall apart. So that's why it's like that. Omar, you look at the way you guys did on the offensive force tonight. Just kind of, what what were you seeing from from your shots that you were able to get to them first? I think I think we just wanted it a little more. That's that's really it. I mean, along with uh, Coach Motes, you know, he's on us every day about rebounding. Um, you know, it's how we it's how we start our shoot around every day uh, before every game. So it's just in our minds and something that we really want to do. And coaching staff stays on us. That's why it's become a habit. Last time you guys played these, uh, New Mexico, Dan had 31 points. He was driving at will. Did you guys make an adjustment before this game to kind of, kind of take him out of the game? We had we had a awareness of him, you know. It was in our game plan. Uh, he's had a couple game winners, you know, going straight to the bucket. So we knew that we had to stop him and, uh, you know, make those other guys score from outside. And we we had a plan of being in and out the entire game. And I think we executed that well. And that's that's why he didn't score that much. And it seemed like House was never comfortable with the ball in his hands tonight. I mean, is that kind of a key to slowing this team down? Uh, I think I think that's kind of a testament to Roddy. You know what I mean? He really got up in him and he kind of gave him a, tes a taste of his own medicine. To be honest with you, that's what that's what I felt like. Um, and so I think I think he was kind of the head of the snake as as far as you know lead, leaders on that team, and I think that's cutting cutting that head off kind of helped us. You know, uh, Buzo, I'll start with you, and you guys can respond as well. Senior night on Tuesday. I know you're not really there yet mentally, but you know Max, Cam, and um, uh, excuse me, uh, Mo all going through senior night. Like and Sam, don't forget Sam. Sam. Is Sam. Winter coming finally? Yeah, winter. Yeah. Um, just your thoughts on these seniors and sending them out. That's going to be a special night for Max, obviously. Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah. Yeah, for surely. I mean, um, you know, Max has been here a long time, a uh, big part of the Boise community, so I'm sure everybody's going to be really hyped uh, for his senior night. But along with the rest of the seniors, too, you know, these guys mean a lot to us and a lot to our program. They've invested a lot. So more than anything, we want get, to get that dub for those guys. Yeah, uh, even even for the little time I've been here, you know what I mean, they've, they've made such a big big impact on me, but most more importantly, the team, you know what I mean, as far as, uh, as, far as leadership, like I said, and growth, you know what I mean, they they, they have a lot of input, and, in, you know, whether whether it's Mo, whether it's Sam, whether it's Max, whether it's Cam, uh, they all have a very, very important roles on the team. It's going to be a sad night for you, huh, losing Max at the senior night emotions. I mean, yeah, it's going to be hard. Uh, my, my travel buddy, like, he's always my roommate on the road, and, uh, just to bond with him over the last three years has just been incredible. And to see his growth from my freshman year to now is just incredible. And um, I'm really excited for him. For whoever wants to take it, I mean, it's another sellout crowd tonight. They were loud from the start. You know, they stayed loud all night. Just how impressive was, was that tonight? That was probably one of the best crowds we've had all year. And, yeah. Uh, I want to challenge the fans to have an even better one on Tuesday because the last time we're going to play an extra mile this year. And, Last chance you get to see this team, these, this senior class, and uh, you just got to take advantage of that moment. I think it was a lot of fun just because, you know, it shows people really care about basketball here. I mean, they really filled it up. And uh, just knowing that's going to be sold out, you know, kind of gets you juiced up. And basketball is always fun to play, but it's so much more fun to play when the, this thing is sold out. So it was great. Yeah, I've said this multiple times. Like this place is special. Like Boise is special. You know what I mean? Like the fans really come out and they support their their sports. Not you know not not talking about you know just football. Not talking about any of the other sports, but like basketball, bro. Like it's it's different. You know, you've seen it tonight. It kind of helps helps us you know get energy. Like Wizzle said, you know, it's really it really gets us juiced up. You know, you guys have probably done enough to punch your ticket to the tournament. I mean, when you guys come out tonight and you guys get put locked in against a really good team all night. How do you guys stay focused at this point in the season? I think just because, you know, we woke up uh, these past couple of days and we're one of the few teams that has all of our goals still ahead of us and that is achievable. So I think that just gives us a different fuel and a different juice to keep going. Good. Good. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you, guys. There they are, Tyson.
Degenhart, I grabbed that, put the wrong headset on here. Tyson Degenhart and uh, Omar Stanley and uh, Chibuzo Abos. We appreciate them for speaking to us. Uh, so, Kelly, uh, we're going to hear from Max Rice in a minute. Chibuzo Abo does have another year, but he does plan to walk on senior night on Tuesday. Uh, I mean, Max Rice walked on senior night last year and then came back. I believe Abu Kijab has walked on a senior night and then come back. So wouldn't put too much stock into it yet. Um, but uh, Chibuzo Abo is planning to walk on senior night in case it is his last year. Uh, he wants to have that moment with his family. So there'll be five players walking for Boise State on senior night. Um, but uh, there is a chance that he comes back. I mean, you, in terms of guys that actually see the floor, you lose Max Rice and Cam Martin for sure. I mean, you think about uh, who Boise State could have coming back uh, next year. It is, uh, you know, crazy to think about all the guys they have coming back. This team could be awesome uh, next year with some of the pieces they have coming back. So, uh, but uh, yes, Abo is going to walk. Does not mean he's gone. Uh, we'll put that out there, but I think I would I would fully expect Abo and Tyson Degenhart to declare for the NBA draft. They really don't have anything left to lose. They both have one year left of college basketball. They can go do some workouts, get some free NBA gear, and then have a decision to make. I would expect, as of right now, Tyson Degenhart to be back. I think it's a little more interesting on uh, Buzo, uh, but, I mean, you got Roddy. I mean, Stanley coming back. I mean, this you know, Meadow. I mean, Lockett. I mean, this team should be loaded next season. It's uh, they're, they're moving in the right direction. That's not even counting, you know, uh, Peanut Carmichael, who's averaging like 30 a game or whatever in high school, and some of the other guys that bring it in. And they're going to have a spot or two to maybe go get another transfer. So, Boise State's in a really, really nice spot uh, moving forward. We're at 40 minutes in, and we have 307 of you still watching here on a Saturday night. I really appreciate you guys for that. We're going to take a quick 90-second timeout. And then Leon Rice, the head coach, we'll hear from him, his thoughts uh, about this win, about senior night coming up on Tuesday, uh, where they are in the NCAA tournament. Uh, again, uh, your head coach, Leon Rice, he's here in 90 seconds on Bronco Nation News. All Bronco Nation News broadcasts come from the Cutwater Spirits Canned Cocktail Studios. Check out one of their more than 30 flavors of premix premium cocktails at your local gas station or grocery store. Cutwater Spirits, perfect for your next game day tailgate party. Our title sponsor is rowpaint.com for all your commercial, industrial, residential painting needs. Check out rowpaint.com. Don't forget about their concrete coatings. Transform that ugly concrete slab on your back patio in your garage in just one day. Contact rowpaint.com for a free estimate today. The official paint and coatings company of Boise State Athletics and our title sponsor at Bronco Nation News is rowpaint.com. Idaho Central Credit Union has been helping members achieve financial success for more than 80 years. There's an ICCU branch on almost every corner, but the closest is in your pocket with free e-branch mobile and online banking. See why more than 500,000 members love ICCU and join one in four Idahoans by making the switch today at ICCU.com. Since 1984, Ridley's Family Markets has prided itself on being a hometown food and drug store that employed value members of the local community. Ridley's Family Markets has 13 locations in the state of Idaho and many more in the surrounding states. Download the new Ridley's app to your smartphone, get savings up to 40% off at the checkout line, and find a location near you at shopridleys.com. Former Bronco Matt Bauscher is once again the number one ranked realtor in the Treasure Valley. No home is too big or too small for Matt and his team. Let them fulfill all your real estate needs at BauscherRealEstate.com. Back here live on the Lithia Ford of Boise postgame show. The Cutwater Studios, again, more than 35 flavors, premix premium cocktails. You can pick one up in your uh, local gas station or grocery store. The mobile studios here at Extra Mile Arena. Our title sponsor, of course, RowPaint.com. Andy Rowe. I'm so pumped we get to take Andy Rowe and his lovely wife with us to San Diego. Uh, we took some of our other sponsors to the Colorado State game. Andy couldn't go, and uh, we're taking Andy and his wife on the uh, BNN jet to uh, San Diego as part of our trip. We're taking our trip with the winner, and uh, Roy Miller is going to join us hopefully to, on Monday's show, maybe Tuesday, but we're going to talk to Roy Miller, our winner. And then uh, we'll have some fun with uh, Andy Rowe and company getting to go down to San Diego for the San Diego uh, State game on Friday. Um, next week. So two games left. Boise State really in a nice spot for the NCAA tournament in a nice spot. Now tied for first in the Mountain West with two games to go. Uh, we'll get to some of your uh, comments here. Yes, Ugbo. Um, he had to sit this season. They are hopeful and they are expecting he'll be available next season, but I don't know if they 100% have clarity on that yet, but he is ineligible this season. Uh, they are hoping to have Ugbo, and I believe he's going to, based on the workouts I've seen him do before the game, he's quite the uh, quite the player. So, um, yes, I believe uh, I believe they'll have him, and uh, yes, he can flat out ball. Uh, let's see, uh, such a big win versus a desperate team. Would love to get a top twenty five vote. Uh, 
Jeff, what do you think? Fans are wanting me to ask you. Any chance Boise State gets a top 25 vote this week? Jeff said he says they're right there. He, he kind of gave a little shoulder shrug. He'll 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 they'll be in his under consideration uh teams uh this week. So Jeff Jeff does have a uh top 20. They're above Utah State, Jeff Grammer says. There you go. You got if you guys thought you liked Jeff Grammer already, now, now he's really trying to endear himself here before he gets out of town tomorrow. So if you see Jeff Grammer out at a local establishment tonight, buy him a cold one because uh he just said he has them ahead of Boise State on his list. So uh they're there you go. Uh, Chris Lockett, uh, situation already seems fishy. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Uh, Seth, he was sick tonight. So uh, he was uh, sick tonight, and that was why they kept him away from the team. Um, yep, I can't. I'm looking forward, uh, David, to go back and listen to that. That was kind of cool that they uh, did that and uh, shout that out. Um, I was kind of kidding about BNN having a jet. One of our sponsors has a jet. They let us use it sometimes because they're very nice, and uh, they are donating it for the San Diego State game as part of our trip. Um, they they said uh, Jeff for president. They're saying Jeff, so they uh, they they love you here. Uh, shout out to Jeff. So Jeff Jeff uh, Grammer has endeared himself to Boise State fans, saying that that uh, he will consider them for the top twenty five, which I guess is good enough. But he did say they would be ahead of New, of uh, Utah State on his list. That might change after he has to go to Logan in, in a week. We'll see what he's saying then. Uh, but uh, uh, that was uh, again eighty nine seventy nine is the final. I don't think Boise State will get ranked. Some of you are asking. I mean, I just think the eight losses at this point in the season um, probably going to be tough. They'll get some votes probably. I mean, that's five in a row by double digits. Um, I don't know if it'll be enough though. It's hard to go from getting one or two votes to all of a sudden being ranked. It just doesn't really happen. So, um, Jeff, hopefully finding some good grub and drinks in town. I hope is what uh, Jordan says. Uh, Jeff is the second best Mountain West beat writer, according to Grand Teton. So he'll, he'll uh, probably take that, I guess, at this point. But as I bother him here while he's trying to write a story for the uh, Albuquerque Journal. Uh, let's hear from Leon Rice so I can shut up for a few minutes and let Jeff write. Uh, Leon Rice, Boise State head coach. He spoke to the media after the game. Uh, keep the uh, comments coming. Keep the talk coming. But let's hear from uh, Leon Rice here on the Lithia Florida Boise postgame show. Again, we're presented by RowPaint.com. We're in the Cutwater Spirits Mobile Studios. Boise State wins it 89-79. Here's Leon Rice after the game. Terrific. And, you know, first half was impressive in a lot of ways. We were sped up a little bit. That's what they do to you. I mean, you know, and I think our guys were a little juiced up to play and with this environment and the way the uh, – so we were just going a little too fast maybe in, on some of the shots, but we made up for it with our rebounding. We had 12 offensive rebounds the first half. Otherwise, we're down, you know, and, and said we're up two at half. And and then the second half, man, we were efficient and smart and tough, tough. Because I'm telling you, uh, I, you know, they had a week to prepare and they were coming off a tough game. And Coach Patino did a great job and their staff, those guys, and, you know, they got veterans. Lots of good veterans that were, they were locked in. And, uh, you know, I just thought they did a great job with that. You guys took two of those veterans out of the game when Den and House were really non factors tonight. Defensively, what did you guys do to shut them down? Well, they're, they're uh, yeah, our defense was terrific. Credit to Coach Burns and all these guys that they had a great understanding of what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, it's been a tough week for Mike, and uh, he, you know, just, shows up and grinds away and does his job and um, just got these guys ready defensively. And to be able to keep those guys out of the paint, it's a handful and you can't do it uh, with just one guy. You got to do it with a team and because um, they can get to the paint on anybody. And, you know, we did some great stuff with our guards and all the guys that guarded um, their guards. Just, you know, you, you, you're not going to stop them. You just got to contain them. Huge, huge, and you know the um, we didn't get as many offensive rebounds because we didn't miss many shots in the second half. We were pretty efficient, and so now I was just uh, really proud of our guys. And you know we in that second half, you know we've had a lot of contributions off the bench, and and the, that. I think those four games of our bench being able to help us, you know, Omar played 20 minutes last game. He was, he was ready to play a game like this. And, you know, I kept thinking, okay, do I get the, uh, those guys, Tyson, Omar, a rest? But they were playing so good. I just thought, man, if I'm sitting on that other bench, 
you cheer me if I take Omar out, <laughs> you know, like, because he was just such a force in there. And, um, you know, it, it but it takes a, it takes a lot to play at that high level for 20 straight minutes. And I think Tyson, Omar, and uh, uh, did 20 straight minutes there in the second half. We talked a lot this year about have the importance of having multiple weapons when one guy goes down and another guy steps up. Yeah. When everyone's clicking like they did tonight, just – how, yeah. much, how, how much do you like your chances? Well, we're 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 playing good because we had to play good tonight. I'm telling you that I saw the, you know, I saw it from, I saw that New Mexico team. I knew they were dialed in, and you know they got like I said they got a great coach, and they got a great staff and great players. And we were going to have to play an A game to beat them tonight. And I thought in a lot of ways we did. And uh, I think you know the Mountain West has got some good basketball teams. Those were. Two really, really good teams tonight that you got to see. And what a great environment and great game. And we need all those people. I mean, I know it's a 9 o'clock game. It wasn't my choice. Um, and it's a weeknight, but I will write notes to for people to miss work the next day. And I don't have to worry about the media. They don't get up till about 11 or 12 anyways. So uh, <laughs> on a good day, yeah. Uh, but the, the these seniors and this group, it's the last time you'll get to see them live here in, in Boise, and uh, we just need we need the help to get us over against a, a great Nevada team. Nevada's done some special things, and um, we're gonna play another great game. Dan put up 31 points last time you guys played. He did a great job driving to the rack. Today, I think he had third, like three points midway through the second half. Did you guys make an adjustment to keep them out of the paint? The, the yeah, guys? yeah. It's, you know, credit Roddy. He did some good stuff. And Mike and um, the the plan was 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 good. Because, you know, we, we played them, it seemed like a long time ago. It wasn't that long ago. But we felt like we've gotten a little better defensively since then. And um, he he's a great player. And they got so many guards that can get to the paint, get to the paint, get to the paint. And, um, you know. I think we got a couple turnovers a few times where we, you know, were able to get on the ball a little bit when they drove. And but it's man, it's a it's a challenge because, like I said, those those are some great players. Kind of look at it one game at a time. So you have to start this final three game stretch and now have one under your belt already um, with the two that are ahead. Uh, how big was that? Well, you know, it was huge because I mean that's quad one win. And, you know, quad one, it doesn't kill you. You know, it doesn't, that should not affect them, but, um, but it helps you. And so to get another, you know, that puts us in elite company with six quad one wins right now. And um, so, you know, that was huge, huge game for us. And, um, you know, when we've been playing great, so you don't want to be, where, you know, now the pressure's on for the next. It doesn't mean it's not. I mean, it's the same, but that's the privilege we get to have is that we got some pressure in March, and that's great. And that's the way we approach it. Leon, you've been in this situation a million times, and I mean, like, you still have games left, but maybe some of the hay is in the barn regarding the ultimate March Madness big dance. What's the mindset and motivation now to say, you know, just to keep with it? Do you guys do anything differently in Spokane when you got those massive leads and you knew you were dancing, but you still had a few games left? Um, I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I lost you. I was looking at your Mariners uniform. I was like, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. And I don't, I'll be honest, I didn't hear a thing you said. <laughs> Three games left. Is there any mic That's the old school one, one kind of too, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Drawing on your experiences in Spokane. Two. You, we got two. Two games. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Two games left. I mean, and just staying focused for those two, knowing that you know maybe you know maybe you might be in the tournament regardless. Well, it, it's it's not about that. It, you know, the, we have a, you know, we always it's you walk in the football facility, it says our goal win the Mountain West. So you know that still means something and a lot. Everyone always just talks about that that, but. You know, our guys want to win the, the the league, and it's a great league. And you know, the the thing that's funny, and even the the guys that were broadcasting the game asked me that, like nobody talks about you guys. We don't get the respect, and we're in first place, you know. And uh, 
these guys want to earn that respect and earn that with a you know fighting for a championship. So every game's so important. You know, yeah, we've done some great things and put ourselves in a great position. And but it's just about the excellence of of every game for us. And and the, you know, these guys love playing together. And they're you know, there's so many guys that have contributed different nights. And and tonight those starters got rode hard and put away wet in the second half. But they were on it. They were cooking. And so, you know, different nights we're, we have different guys, and that's the beauty of this team. You mentioned it's been a tough week for Bernsey. Uh, as much as you can, do you mind expanding on that a little bit? Well, that's, I, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, they're a death in the family, and, you know, he, he's family to all these guys, and, you know, just a tough thing to go through, you know, any time, but especially when the, the – you know, you're you're doing all the stuff that he has to do, and uh, so. But we rallied around him, and that was my next question. Yeah. You guys kind of talked before the game. Just, just you know, these he knows how much he's loved in this program, and that that helps. What does he do to this program? Into well, we're we're three years in a row, top thirty in defense, and you know, I always tell the guys, you, you can't be good at something if you don't have a maniac on a mission that's every day and that's what he is for these guys he's just a maniac on a mission with our defense and he just fights and fights for them and he you know and watches film till 3 a.m and then he gets up at 4 a.m and starts watching again <laughs> i mean it's crazy the level that the that you know not just mike all my assistants do but his commitment to our defense is i mean how, think about that. We, we're top 30, three years in a row. That that's remarkable. And we didn't start in the top 30. You know, we didn't. He, we've gotten better and better and better because of the persistence and the consistency of his coaching with our defense. And he deserves a, a ton of credit for that. Well, he already has been a couple times. Yeah, he's a hell of a coach. I'm lucky. I mean, I got, I got the greatest staff. I mean, I got head coaches everywhere, and then I got the up and coming guys that are, should be great coaches. And um, I mean, come on, look at that, that Jerry Palm. <laughs> Grab it. Uh, anyways, but no, I got the greatest staff because they've all been head coaches. They know. They have great feel, you know, Dury with the offense. I mean, our offense has become terrific. And Burns with the defense and, you know, Berto and Lex and Red. I mean, our our rebounding is fourth in the country right now. Our defense rebounds fourth in the country, and Red's in charge of that. I mean, these guys do their job at a high level. And, you know, they're like the players. Whatever their job is, there are stars at it. And, you know, it's remarkable what, what I have. And... And that frees me up to, you know, get to do the most important thing, which is our players and and work on our culture and our, you know, because that wins you games. And that wins you games in March. What are, what are senior nights like for you? I remember two years ago you were telling us how much you were going to miss Key Jab. Uh, year it was, you know, Nod, Ishii, you got, I think it's four. That's yeah, four yeah, five. Uh, Boo, uh, Buzo's going to walk, too. Okay, Buzo's mm -hmm. going to participate. Mm -hmm. They're they're hard, and there's a lot of emotion involved. Max has gone through ten senior nights now, so I don't think that'll be that emotional because <laughs> we're going to petition for another year. Because <laughs> uh, apparently the NC will just grant it. I mean, uh, it uh, they're hard, and but they deserve these guys deserve a big crowd and a big night and a you know this this team does because they have just fought and fought and fought all year long and played a hard schedule and just been so entertaining for these fans and these fans have been brilliant I mean it was a great atmosphere in there tonight sold out early and I didn't have to ride a horse or walk across so not that I don't mind riding a horse um, but I didn't like walking across the river <laughs> uh, but it's getting done and it's getting done because of our administrations all doing their job at a high level. And these fans were terrific tonight. And I thank them so much. And, you know, I just, we need, I know it's a nine o'clock game, but take a nap, sleep in the next day, use your sick days, whatever we got to do. We got to fill this place for these guys because it's going to be a heck of a game. And Nevada's playing great.
There he is, Leon Rice. Appreciate him for his time here on the uh, Lithia Florida Boise post game show. I saw a lot of comments coming in. Uh, the four teams in front of Boise in the net rankings all lost today. The Broncos could be at least number 22 tomorrow in the net rankings. Uh, that's interesting uh, to, to note. Um, excuse me. There was a couple of you asking about Leon Rice and his name popping up. Uh, I saw a story from Jeff Goodman, or I guess a tweet, where it looks like Danny Sprinkle. I mean, excuse me. Looks like uh, Mike Hopkins is likely going to be out at Washington. And I mentioned Leon Rice is going to come up as a candidate. I, I think he 100% will. You will hear rumors. You will see lists listing five candidates, and Leon Rice will no doubt be on that. Do I think he's leaving Boise State? No, I'm not saying that at all. Um, I do think the timing with Max Rice being a senior, um, his his other son, Cade, is a walk-on. He could move. It, I don't think that matters as much. Um, but I do think that uh, it's something to follow, at least, with uh, Leon Rice and um, if he were ever going to leave and if he wanted that one last big payday, and let's be honest, he's going to make a million dollars at Boise State next year. He could probably make like three at Washington. If he wants that big payday late in his career, I could see this being the time to do it with uh, Max graduating at the end of the season. I'm not saying it's happening. I still would put it at like a 10 or 15 percent chance. I don't think it will, uh, but I certainly think it's something to uh, keep an eye on. Danny Sprinkle, it sounds like, was the main uh, the main uh, candidate, according according to uh Jeff Goodman there, and I could certainly see that him to want to take the you know capitalize on this year. I don't know how good you can do it at Utah State, much better than this. So take your your job and uh, and your 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 chance and move on. Um, but uh, I, I you know just I don't think he, I don't think he's going to take it, but I certainly think it's something to monitor. I think it's certainly possible that he's going to become a candidate there, and uh, especially if they win that first tournament game this year, man, they're going to have to pony up and probably give him another raise this year from the the million dollars that he's already making. Uh, Jeff Grammer is heading out. Appreciate you, Jeff. Can you give us one comment from the game here? He's good. Let's let we're going to make Jeff uh, stay a couple more minutes. I know he's trying to get out of here, and I'm sitting on your cord here, Jeff. Sorry about that. If I can. No, I think I'm no, I'm sitting on it. All right, there you go. Uh, hold on a second. Jeff Grammer, they love you so much. They want to hear one thought from you. Uh, your thoughts on uh, what you saw from Boise State in the two meetings and where you think they are in the hierarchy of the conference here. Oh, man, hierarchy. Uh, I'm probably going to start off by upsetting people by saying they're still number two probably. I think that's fair. Until – it kind of comes down to the until I see San Diego State knocked off, you know, I'll I'll, st I'll side with them. But oh, I don't think anybody would would deny that. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think the couple love for Colorado State and Nevada and some uh, of these other teams. I think Boise State should be higher than them. I'll tell you what, Nevada's playing pretty good right now. But no, we're we're talking if we're we're actually doing a power ranking, a popular subject. Yes. Um, you probably go San Diego State, um, one, uh, Boise two right now though, um, Boise two. And uh, but wait, I'm, my power rankings, everyone ripped on me already. Last I know, year right? When I, when I, earlier this season, um, but. Utah State's done everything that deserves all the accolades, all the credit, everything right. Um, but you at some point do just have to kind of uh use the eye test a little bit. And uh, Mountain West fans probably hate that because that's what usually gets the Mountain West team kicked out and a UCLA in or a yeah. power conference team in. But when you just look at Utah State. Um, as good as they have been, and they you got to be careful. You got to go to Logan next week. Man. I know, you right? Be careful what you say. Here. Um, they've proven it at, at every turn. I would still put them third right now. Um, because they only have one game left that they could lose, right? Um, yeah. I forget who wins. I mean, they should have lost in Fresno the other they day. They should have lost in Fresno. Uh, I think they, they, they have Air Force at home before. Yeah, it's either they Air Force or San Jose. It's Air Force. It's, yeah. I think it's Air Force, and then. Uh, oh no, they because they just played Air Force. Um. Well, they just played Air Force yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then it must be San Jose. Yeah. So, anyway, they, they should win. And then, you know, New Mexico beat them by double digits in the pit. Yeah, they're, um, at, they're at San Jose. That's right. And uh, if if New Mexico knocks them off, I don't think anybody would be totally surprised, even though it's in Logan. But, uh, look, Utah State's right there, too. My preseason pick was uh, San Diego State, and, and they're right back in the mix right now. Sure. Look, San Diego State, non-conference, did great. They haven't really won, done anything on the road that everybody likes to point to. What have you done on the road? Colorado State hasn't done anything on the road. Winning on the road stuff. Boise State's picked up a couple on the road. Um, I still think if you're playing the percentages, and maybe Boise State fans won't like me to say this, but if you're just trying to factor out seeds and look ahead, like mm -hmm. you probably got to assume that San Diego State's going to win on Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, I think you. I think Boise State can win on Tuesday for for senior night. That'll be a big crowd. I know New yep. Mexico, but Nevada's playing very well. I'm not going to chalk that up as a guaranteed win, but I think that. Boise State probably goes one and one in these next two and gets to third gets to uh thirteen and five for the league. I think the two guys on Nevada that you need to watch out for though, Hunter McIntosh is playing yes. really good lately. 
Um, and, and Davidson, I think people probably know that by now, but he, he's kind of uh, really come on strong. So those two guys are good. Obviously, their guards are great. So, um, But, yeah, I look, it, it's the six teams and really the seven when you throw in UNLV that are in all the conversations about how good this league is. On a, any given night, I really think any one of the seven could be any one of the other teams, right? UNLV has so much talent. The two worst matchups for the Lobos, Boise State and UNLV, uh, a lot of size on the perimeter, just be, beat them up. Mm-hmm. And uh, when you got a bunch of short guards, it's hard to to make the other team pay when you can't shoot over them. And that's kind of where the Broncos um, have a real – real advantage over the the Lobos that they just can't figure out. And you've watched this league. Final question for you, and I'm holding you. I know you got stuff to do. You probably got to go get dinner and a story to write. Uh, But final thing, you've covered this league for a long time. You've watched Boise State for a long time. Boise State, as everybody knows, the one kind of final monkey on their back, 0-9 all time in the NCAA tournament. Uh, Can this team do enough to get a high enough seed that would help with this? And I guess the second part of the question, can – can this finally be the year? Tell Boise State fans right now, all 300 of them still watching. Can this, <laughs> not that they are going to, but is this team good enough so, from what you've seen in, in these two games that they can win a game in the big dance? Yes. Obviously, it all comes down to the matchups, right? Um, but what I like about this team is the way Tyson has played since the pit, frankly. Uh, January 31st, you know, he had a four-point game. Still did some other things just fine. But uh, since since then, he's had now six, I think, 20-point games out of eight games, I think. Yep. Um, He's on a tear. He is playing like, you know, had it not been for Isaiah Stevens, he would have been the preseason player of the year in this league and and deserved, deserves that, you know, level. Yep. And he's right back to being in the conversation as the best player in the league with Jaden Levine. If Boise State Osabar. gets first somehow, if if, if you if they win in in uh, San Diego and you know or uh, yep. New Mexico goes and wins, I mean, can you make could that could Tyson yeah. be the player of the year? Yeah, he could. Yeah. I think uh, I think the case right now it comes down to I think. Because of their their record, I do think Isaiah Stevens probably has played himself out of it, or yeah. Colorado State's played Isaiah. And out everyone's of it. saying Grant Osibor, but I, I like Brown, man. Darius Brown for yeah. me has hit some yeah. huge shots, man. His overall stats may not be as good, but he's won. He's single handedly won some huge games. O- Osibor yesterday too wasn't very good. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember what his numbers were, but they weren't very good. Um, Jaden Ledee is is legit though. Yeah. Um, they win. They're good. he's going to win it. But um, look, this is a fun league to cover, and uh, in the best, uh, Patino said it. If this is the best season of the Mountain West ever, yep. And right now you got two teams, and it's Utah State and Boise State that are tied for first going into the last week of the season. Like, enjoy it, man. Like, it's okay to enjoy it, even if it doesn't happen. If Utah State does go two and zero, and 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 the Broncos slip up once, like, hey, you got a ton of boys. New Mexico's got more, you know. Boise State fans are going to be pulling, <laughs> dying. You know they they have their issues at times, but uh, they're going to be pulling next for them hardcore are, for next sure. Saturday. If Boise, especially with Boise State playing Friday, yeah, that game's Friday night. They they could be looking know. At either for a tie or sole possession. I yeah. mean, all Boise State has to win Tuesday. Uh, if Boise State wins Tuesday, then even if they lose on Friday, th- that game Saturday, if, if it would still be for a share, if if uh, New Mexico were to win, I'll tell you one other thing, Omar Stanley. Patino's talked about it a couple times. He has given his dad so much grief. Yeah, why do you let him go? Like, why? Why is he? Why did you? You didn't want him. Like, if you had kept Omar Stanley at St. John's, my life would be so much easier. Is what Patino has said a couple times. So, <laughs> uh, anyway, the, it was a good matchup tonight. Uh, yeah. they wore him down, but like two point game at halftime. Yeah, these it was a great teams, game. These two teams have played a lot of good games lately. But Boise State's what four out of five, four, yeah. four to five in the Patino era. I think. How was it? What you? Why you been to all the atmospheres this year? How was the crowd? It was good, man. It was good. Now I think obviously the next step is to consistently be like that. But yeah. um, look, man, Utah State's doing it pretty consistently with their student section. Yeah. I think the student section here needs to um do what they did tonight a lot more consistently. And and you do that and the show and the herd. And so one thing the pit doesn't have the one really unique thing about the pit is as good as an atmosphere as it is. It's not really been because of the student section a whole lot. Hmm. Um, now they they're getting better. Um, they, in fact, this year they've been okay, but I do think the student section has to like consistently show up and fill up a whole section at a time, you know? Yeah. People don't like it here because the band kind of breaks it in half. Yep. And then you also have students in the second and third levels yeah. and it kind of makes it hard for them to feel unified. So there's some talk of maybe moving it to that end, or if they could fill this in and have it be on the bottom level of both ends. But yeah. again, as you know, they can sell more for those seats than they can for the ones yep. up there for students. Absolutely. So it's a balancing act. I it guess, is a balancing but. act. Um, I do think tonight, though, you get this a few times a year, and, and there's no reason people aren't going to start talking about this consistently as one of the best 
environments you in, gotta, in the Mountain West. You gotta stop being nice to Boise State fans, man. They're they're, uh, they're loving you on the comments and stuff, man. Hey, safe travels it, back. Appreciate you as always, man. We'll see you in Vegas. See you in Vegas. And uh, like I said, there's gonna be a lot of people following your Twitter feed the next week or so, hoping for that win there in uh, in Logan. But uh, seriously, man, safe travels back. Appreciate your time as always. There he is. Um, they want me to do a morning segment with a rotating Mountain West beat writer. There you go. They're, they're loving what they're hearing from uh, Jeff Grammer. He is the uh, the best in the business. We appreciate him. And uh, yeah, the crowd was great tonight. And uh, it was a, it was a fun night. Fun night at Extra Mile Arena. And again, Boise State wins it 89 to 79. That's the final. They win it by 10. They're up to 34 in the uh, Ken Palm. We'll see where they are in the net rankings tomorrow. And uh, I just have one favor for you. If you, we got 281 of you still watching this, if you can please like the video in the bottom of the screen, if you can uh, uh, subscribe on our YouTube channel, we're trying to get more YouTube folks on here. If you're, if you can just help us and hit uh, like, it kind of helps us show up in the algorithm and things. Uh, I don't know how it all works, but if you're able to like the video, you're watching this video for free. Again, it's thanks to all of our sponsors. If you can support us with a subscription, we'd love it. It's only 50 bucks for 365 days of coverage. BNN 50 deal is the promo code. BNN 50 deal. And you get uh, you get a 50 bucks for an entire year, 365 days of coverage. Uh, we have a $6.99 monthly option as well. Um, and if you can't do that, great. But if you're able to help share these videos, retweet them on social media, help us uh, get the word out there about our social media channels, uh, we would uh, really appreciate that. And also... We would uh, really appreciate it on Thursday if you can watch our first ever live broadcast. We'll be Bronco Nation News making history. We'll be streaming the Boise State home opener for softball on Thursday against Kennesaw State. We're going to have Coach Justin Schultz mic'd up while he's coaching third base and uh, wearing an earpiece, and we'll be talking to him during the game, getting some insights, some behind-the-scenes access. Maybe he'll let us call a hit-and-run or a bunt or a steal or something. We'll try to have some fun with it. It's going to be on Facebook, X, and YouTube. So tell your friends, make plans, 5 o'clock broadcast, assuming the other game doesn't doesn't go late and it will be archived on all the social media channels in case you uh, can't watch it live. But Bronco Nation News is purchasing this broadcast from Boise State. Uh, we're purchasing the rights for this. And so it's a monumental step in our history. And this is only uh, doable because of your help and your subscriptions and your support of uh, Bronco Nation News. So if you're able to support us, 50 bucks for a full year BNN 50 deal or $6.99 a month is an option as well. And uh, we're working on some other cool stuff that uh, we're trying to push across the finish line. So stay tuned for more. Uh, from Bronco Nation News, but uh, make sure on Thursday uh, you join us. You can join us Monday, Mike Prater, Monday morning, uh, 9 a.m. Mike Prater will help us break this down and saw Mike at the game tonight. So a lot to talk about. And again, senior night on Tuesday, and uh, we'll have you covered every step of the way at bronconationnews.com. So enjoy the uh, rest of your evening. Thank you so much. Uh, subscribe to BNN if you can. Again, a 10-point win for Boise State. That's five straight double-digit wins for the Broncos, and uh, they are rolling right now. So appreciate you guys. You can read my story a little later online, and you can uh, join us Monday morning with Mike Prater, Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com. So have a great rest of your weekend. Again, final score, 89-79. to Broncos tied for first place with two to go, looking like in very, very good shape for a good seed in the NCAA tournament. They're rolling. They're playing great. And, uh, again, hour and 12 minutes. So we uh, appreciate you guys for sticking with us. Have a great rest of your weekend, and we'll talk to you Monday morning, 9 a.m. with Mike Prater. Again, B.J. Rain signing off from the Cutwater Studios, Lithia Ford Boise postgame show presented by RopePaint.com. Boise State, five in a row, 89-79. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll talk to you guys later, folks.